guys. It's me, Alyssa. I'm so excited to be here talking with you guys today. Um, it is a life update time, so I'm gonna share a little bit of my life updates and then I want you guys to share your life updates with your group. Tell them how your week's been, tell them a high point or a low point, whatever's going on in your life, share it with your group. Um, but in my life, something very exciting, two things very exciting have happened in the past week. One is that I decorated the wall in my living room and I think it looks really good. You can just call me Joanna Gaines or something. I don't know. The next big HGTV star. Actually, here, let me just show you. I'm gonna bring you with me. Come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, we're gonna go out here. Okay. Can you see that? That is what I did. Some pretty photos in the frame up there. Ooh, some, some shelves with some greenery. Oh, who is she? Who is she? <laughs> okay, well, that's one update. I'm very, very excited about the progress in our apartment. I think we've come a long way since we moved in. Um, but the second update I wanted to tell you guys about was something really cool that I got to do, which is on Friday, I went over to a woman's house named Lucille. And Lucille is very old. She's 92 and she's gone to Browncroft since 1967. It was amazing. I got to have tea. I had a whole hour long conversation with her just talking about life. And she was telling me about what life used to be like at Browncroft and talking to me about all the different ways she's seen God work in her life. And it was such an amazing experience. So my advice to you guys is to find someone that's old or older, like they don't have to be 92, but 52, 32, 72, however old they are, and just talk to them and hear about how their life was or how their life is going. It's, there you can get so much wisdom from older people and I just love it. And it was a highlight of my week to talk with Lucille. Um, so that's my challenge for you guys. And now I want you guys to share life updates with your small groups and go. <laughs>
What's up, high schoolers? This week is week four of our series called Counterfeit, and it's all about making our faith our own. We don't want anything fake or servicey. We want real, deep, true faith that belongs to us. And I'm so excited to talk to you a little bit more about that today. But first, take out your scribe pads, take out your journals, whatever it is you do while the video is playing, take that out and let's play the bumper. Get it rolling. I'm so excited to be here with you for week four of our series called Counterfeit, which is all about growing our faith. Sometimes our faith can feel ingenuine or a copycat or we're just doing what we're told, but we want our faith to be real. We don't want to be counterfeits. We want to have deep, true, genuine faith in God. And that's why we're talking about how we can grow our faith. This week, we're talking about how turning points in our life can shape our faith and help us to grow. Turning points are points in life where we think we're going one direction and then whoop, God comes in and goes, nope, you are going this direction or this direction or this direction. Whatever direction wasn't the way you were going before. And these turning points can either cause our faith to, to crumble and to break, or we can use these turning points to grow closer and strengthen our faith in God. I wanna tell you a little bit about a turning point that I had in my life when I was around your age. So it was the summer after my junior year of high school. And me and my family had gone to the same church in our small little town from the time I was in seventh grade to that point in my life, which was 11th grade. So five years of going to church and serving with the kids and going to youth group every night. And I, I absolutely loved that church and the community that I found there. But unfortunately, due to some personal um, reasons and decisions, my parents um, decided to stop going to that church. And actually, not only did they stop going to that church, they stopped going to church altogether because they had just been so frustrated with what had happened there. They didn't even bother trying to go anywhere else. And so here I was, a junior in high school. I had just gotten my first car and my license, and I had a choice to make. This was a turning point in my faith. I could either choose to stop going to church altogether find a new church to go to or continue going to the church that I had been going to. I had options and this was the time where my faith in God really came, push came to shove. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't practice anymore. It was the real game. And I had to use that turning point to grow closer to God. I'll let you know how the story ends, but first I wanted to tell you a story that is in the Bible, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. It's the story of Lazarus. So Lazarus was Jesus's friend, and he also had two siblings named Mary and Martha. So Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were all siblings and they were friends with Jesus. It'd be so cool to be besties with Jesus, but that's just me. I don't know about you. I would love to be in Jesus's friend group. <laughs> but so Jesus was way over here. Um, they were way over here, metaphorically, pretend this is a map. Um, so they had to get the message to Jesus that Lazarus had been sick. Uh, so they sent a letter or a messenger pigeon. I don't know what they did. They sent it to Jesus. Jesus got the word that Lazarus was sick. He left. And by the time he got to Mary, Martha and Lazarus, Lazarus had already died. And as you can imagine, his sisters were very, very upset that this had happened. This was a turning point in their life because up until then, all they had known was their brother to be alive. But now he was dead and they really didn't know what to do. But one thing that Mary and Martha didn't do was doubt Jesus during this time. There's actually a passage I want to read to you. If you don't have the Bible app, 
get it. It's awesome. Get the U version. Um, anyway, I'm going to read for you real quick. Martha says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So even though Martha was very upset that Jesus hadn't been there to heal Lazarus, she still chose to have faith in him during this hard turning point in her life. She didn't know what her life was gonna look like. She didn't know what direction it was going to go after her brother had died, but she knew that she could trust God during that time. So Jesus comes, he's with Mary and Martha, and I'm sure many of you know the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. And the reason Jesus wept was because his friend had died. Um, Jesus didn't hide his emotions about that. Jesus knew even though he had the power of God and he knew that he could just snap his fingers and Lazarus would be alive, he still took that time to sit and to be with Mary and Martha and to cry with them over their brother's death. Jesus was there with Mary and Martha during their turning point. And Mary and Martha chose to still trust in Jesus, even though they were upset, they were sad, they were confused and angry about what had happened. They still knew that Jesus could do anything. And we all know how the story ends. Jesus raises Lazarus from the grave. Let me read here what he actually says. So in John chapter 11, verse 41, then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a, la in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. <laughs> and the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to him, take off the grave clothes and let him go. That is so cool. <laughs> I can just imagine the people being like, Jesus, why are you telling Lazarus to like get up? He's, he's dead, he's not asleep, he's dead. And Lazarus just gets up and he's alive. So cool. Um, but Jesus used this turning point to bring glory to God. If Jesus would have healed Lazarus while he was sick, while he was still alive, people would be like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Jesus heals people. We know that already. Big deal. But Jesus did something that had never been done. And he had he, he rose Lazarus from the grave. He was dead, the cold dead. He even had the linens around him. And Jesus said, be alive and he was alive and that's so cool but that wouldn't have happened if he didn't come after Lazarus was already dead so even though that turning point in the middle of it seemed very confusing and sad and Jesus why would you do this he ultimately used that turning point in Mary and Martha's life to bring glory to God and I think that we can do that too I think we can use turning points as it's it's game time. I'm sure many, I'm sure many of you play sports or do music or are you're in drama or something and you practice, right? You practice your sport, you practice your play, you practice your song that you're going to sing or your instrument. And and it's it's really easy to practice. It's kind of fun. You're like, Meh, no big deal." But then then the concert comes or the game comes or the performance comes and it's game time and you have to choose. Are you going to use what you learned in practice or are you just going to, are you going to not? And that's what I think of turning points as, as like game time or, or practice time or not practice time or, <laughs> excuse me, game time or time for the play, whatever it is that you do, performance time, it's time to kick it into gear at those turning points. And I think God uses those to grow our faith. He uses those to see if we'll still follow him, even if things are real and if, even if things are going not according to plan. I don't know if that analogy makes sense. I hope it makes sense in your mind. It makes sense in mine, but let's get back to my story. So I'm at a turning point right now. I'm in 11th grade, I just got my license, I just got my car, and my parents decided to stop going to church. And I had to choose. And ultimately, I chose to continue driving myself every week to go to church, getting up early, continuing to serve, continuing to go to youth group every Wednesday night we had it, just like you guys. But I, I did it. And 
that really grew my faith. It grew my faith because I had to make my faith my own and I had to make my own decisions about how I was going to worship and about how I was going to serve the Lord. And because I made that decision for about a year um, after I had been going by myself, my parents decided to come back and go to church with me. Um, and they continued going to that church. And then when I went to college, I was already used to going to church on my own and having my own faith. And so it was so easy for me to transition into college where I had to go out and find my own church. And I was even able to bring some other people along with me. I was like, come on, let's go. We're going to a new church. This is going to be lots of fun because I had already had that faith in God that I could do it myself and that I made my faith my own at that turning point in my life. Um, I hope that you guys Whenever you face a turning point, whether you're in one now or whether you'll be one, be in one in the future, I know many of you started high school, which was a turning point, and many of you are going to be leaving high school, which is a turning point. Um, but I pray that during those times, you would lean closer to God and you would, you would use those turning points to grow your faith and to not push you away from God, but to keep continuing in the direction that he's calling you to go. Even if it's not the original direction that you were planning on going to, I know that God can use turning points to grow our faith. All right, well, I want you guys to keep talking about these kind of turning points in your life. If you have any, share it with your small group. Um, keep talking about this and keep talking about how you can use them to grow your faith in God in the future. Um, it was great to be here with you today and I look forward to seeing you guys again sometime soon. All right, see ya.